Hello and welcome to the newsroom. I am Mary Kanu. Governor of Zampara State, Belu Matawali, has said the level of insecurity in the state is worsening at an alarming rate. The governor made the remark after confirming the bandit attack on Kadawa village in Zumi local government area of the state. And according to the governor, the bandits killed many innocent people with the death toll rising to 70 and urged communities to defend themselves against the bandits while pledging his administration's commitment to securing the state. And the Delta State Police Command has assured residents of the state of providing adequate security and asked them to go about their normal business activities amid a security threat in the state. This follows an alleged publication by a Fulani jihadist group threatening to launch attacks on the state if the governor, Ifan Yokoa, fails to withdraw his ban on open grazing. In a press statement on Sunday, the acting police public relations officer, Bryce Edafi, said the publication originates from elements that want to cause unnecessary panic among residents. He also said undercover police operatives have been deployed across the state for the purpose of gathering intelligence. And the Nigerian army has urged remnants of the Boko Haram terrorists to surrender and embrace peace. The general officer commanding 7th Division of the Nigerian Army, Brigadier General Abdul Wahab Eyitayo, made the call at a feast organized for journalists by the army on Sunday in Maiduguri. Eyitayo, who is also the commander of Sector 1 Operation Hadinkai, said the recent military onslaught against the insurgents dealt a decisive blow on the terrorists, leaving their remnants in disarray. He noted that nobody, including the military, was happy over the bloodshed, hence the need for the remnants of the insurgents to leverage on the amnesty and repent from their nefarious ways. And in COVID stories, many Indian states have eased coronavirus restrictions, including the capital, New Delhi, where authorities allowed all shops and shopping centers to open as the number of new infections dropped to the lowest in more than two months. Infections peaked in India in May with about 400,000 new cases a day, but dropped to 70,421 new infections reported on Monday, the lowest daily increase since March 31st. India has had the second highest tally of COVID-19 infections in the world after the United States with 29.51 million cases and 374,305 deaths. The Nigerian Railway Corporation, NRC, has announced that it will commence full commercial operations of the standard gauge railway service from Lagos to Ibado on Tuesday, June 15, 2021. Now, this follows the formal commissioning of the 157-kilometer lagos Ibado rail line by President Mamadou Buhari on Thursday, June 10, 2021. This disclosure is contained in a statement issued by the management of NRC and signed by the corporation's Lagos district manager, Jerry Oche, in Lagos on Sunday. Oche, in the statement, pointed out that Alok Gumeji, Abe Okutia, and Monia would remain the stop stations of the Lagos Ibadan train services. And in international news, Zambian leader Edgar Lungu on Sunday suffered an attack of dizziness that prompted a sudden halt to television coverage of an official ceremony in the Southern African nation. Lungu, who is campaigning for re-election in August, had been attending a, def a Defense Forces Commemoration Day event, which was brought to a swift end. Struggling with mounting death and the effects of the coronavirus pandemic, Lungu has been scrambling to boost public support ahead of the August 12th polls, which are for parliament as well as the presidency. And in sports, the board of the Athletics Federation of Nigeria, AFN, has been dissolved. Announcing the dissolution on Monday, the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development said the tenor of the board had expired. At his extraordinary congress on Sunday, June 13, the AFN had asked the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development to invoke Article 10 of its constitution and dissolve the outgoing board, which will now hold an elective congress on Monday, June 14. Well, that's all on the newsroom. Do join us at the top of the hour for more updates. I'm Miri Kanu. Thank you for watching. Thank <laughs> you.